comes from Lamentations 3, verses 19 through 33. The word of the Lord reads, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. For he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. This proclamation of God's great faithfulness and love is well known, and for good reason. It calls us to remember who God is, what God has done. It calls us to have hope, to wait on the Lord, though times are tough. What may not be as familiar to us all are the verses before this, where the same person who proclaims God's faithfulness questions why tragedy has befallen him, why God has done this to him. One of the many things I think this teaches us is that trust in God's faithfulness does not mean there is not pain or grief or question. It means that we believe that through these things, God will be with us and that God is still working. That is what we celebrate and worship this morning, even as we may grieve. Let us pray. God, thank you for your great faithfulness, for your compassions that are new each morning. As you gather us here, may you show us your compassion in a new way this morning. May we encounter your love for us and for the world around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Brandon up to light the Christ candle. As we light the Christ candle, may it be a tangible reminder of God's abiding presence. May it call to mind God's unending faith. May we have hope. I invite you to stand to receive this blessing. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Turn and greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace. 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 Peace.
Hear the word of the Lord from Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, Ye know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
These hymns, Lord, that we sing unto you and praises and worship and joy. Recenter us, refocus us, reunite us with your powerful and loving spirit. How great you are. How worthy of praise you are. Lord, today, maybe there are some here that gather in this place or are worshiping with us online at this moment, that are discouraged, that feel defeated, that the doubts that they have in their hearts and minds are rocking their world, wondering if you're faithful, if you're true, if you're really there. We're reminded here today that you are faithful, that you are with us. God, you are Emmanuel. You are with us. You are El Roy, the God who sees us. And you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We love you today. We do worship you today. We ask that you clear any uh, sense of fog or uh, 
chaos or disillusionment from our hearts and our minds about exactly who you are and that your love and your grace will begin to once again invade our souls, our hearts, and our minds to know that you're our rock, our shield, our help, our fortress, our comforter. We give you, Father, today the concerns of our hearts and of our church family for those that continue to mourn and grieve, such as Kelly and others. <clears throat> pray, Lord, that you would be with those that are grieving, that are hurting, that are struggling financially in our church family, that need a touch from you and finances and health. We're thankful to see some here today that have struggled with their health. We pray, Lord, your continued touch upon their lives in these days. We ask, Lord, that you be with our dear brother, Tim Allison, today. Pray, Lord, that you would touch his body, be with Gigi, Father, today. We ask that you be especially near to them. Lord, we thank you for safe travel mercies and incredible time of ministry in Jamaica for Karen. We thank you for the lives that were touched during BBS this week, as our sister Sharon has shared. We pray, Lord, that um, the moments of Christ coming into the Bible teaching through the snacks, through the laughter, and through the prayers, that, Lord, it would truly make a difference in the hearts and lives of young kids and youth, and even their families. For generational impact, we pray. We pray, Lord, for our pastors, Becca and Levi, as they travel to this new assignment. As Sarah reminded us last week, that we send them. We send them with our blessing. We send them with our prayers. We send them with a certain amount of sadness and yet a great amount of joy for they have served us well. We ask God that you help us now in this time of transition to do what only you can do in your people and in this community as we look to you for what you have for us next. We pray God today that you would continue to be with us as we worship you and uh, be with Pastor Daniel as he pre brings your word in a few minutes may be more to us, as Pastor Levi would say, than words on a page. But may these words that we hear impact our lives to live closer to you and make a difference in this world. And we pray the prayer together that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Um, I've been asked to uh, lead us in our time of worship through tithes and offerings. I wish to... You today that I had some quick Timism or some kind of funny or quip to share with you. Um, however, that is not the case. So, if our ushers would come, uh, let us do give though with joyful hearts today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Um, thank you for continued giving. Um, Tim was one to write about one thing: we're generous people. God helps us to use that generosity to make an impact in our community, in our world. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this time to give financially, whether it be in this space or even online. Um, God, help uh, these gifts, Father, to continue to help us locally and around the world to be your hands and feet, to show mercy and to do justice. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm.
show a little bit of that. Um, I also wish that Pastor Melinda was here and that she could lead us in that the motions for that song. She she knew, she knew them. them so well. It was it was hilarious. Um, thank you very much to everyone who helped with our backpack giveaway and our vacation Bible school um, this last week. Uh, we were able to collect 60 backpacks with school supplies um, that we were able to give away to community members and to show God's love. So thank you very much for your generosity and commitment to that. Um, we also had, and you may have noticed that you didn't recognize a few of the kids in some of those pictures, we had 19 children here at the Vacation Bible School, which was fantastic. Um, and it was a great time to get to know them and to love on all of them. As part of our BBS, our kids also collected money and canned goods um, that will be sent to REAP. Uh, we collected, and I want to really this cheer for this should go to the kids, uh, we collected $67.95 as well as 10 cans of food, which is fantastic. <laughs> wanted to let you guys know that there will be no Monday morning Bible study tomorrow. Um, we are actually looking for someone to help uh, teach and lead that, or maybe a few somebodies. So if you are interested in doing that, you can feel free to reach out to me. Also, uh, on Tuesday, August 13th, our church board will be meeting at 6.30 with uh, the district superintendent, Dr. Ed Eastep, to discuss the search for a new pastor. And then on uh, October 18th through 19th, we will be holding a women's retreat here at St. Paul's. The theme will be come to the table as you are. If you're interested in serving or helping with the planning committee in any way, um, please speak to Mel, um, that would be great. Uh, finally, uh, we will need some help tearing down tables after the service so that the gym can be used uh, for basketball tonight, and we're likely to need this help kind of consistently in the next few weeks. So if you're able to help, just head over to the gym after service and tear those down really quickly. Um, I would like to invite Brandon up. He has a special announcement to give to bring to you all tonight. Uh, the church board has selected Dr. David Wesley to serve as the interim pastor. His first Sunday is going to be August 25th, and we just ask that you pray for him and the church board as we leave the church during this time of transition. Hasn't it been good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? scripture today can say something to us about that. So let's turn to 1 Samuel 12, our scripture reading for today. And God's word reads, Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to you and all that you have said to me, to me and have sent the king over you. See, it is the king who leads you now. I am old and gray, and my sons are with you. I have led you from my youth until this day. Here I am. Testify against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or from whose hand have I taken a bribe and blind my eyes with it? Testify against me, and I will restore it to you. And they said, You have not defrauded us, or oppressed us, or taken anything from the hand of anyone. 
He said to them, the Lord is witness against you and has anointed his witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they said, he is witness. Samuel said to the people, the Lord is witness who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought you your ancestors up out of the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, take your stand so that I may enter into judgment with you before the Lord. And I will declare to you all the righteous acts of the Lord that he performed for you and for your ancestors. When Jacob went into Egypt and the Egyptians oppressed them, then your ancestors cried to the Lord, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought forth your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot about the Lord their God, and he sold them into the hand of Sisera, commander of the army of King Jabin of Hazor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the king of Moab, and they fought against them. Then they cried to the Lord and said, We have sinned! For ye have forsaken the Lord, and have served the Baals and the Asherahs, and but now rescue us from the hands of our enemies, and we will serve you. And the Lord sent Jerubal, and Barak, and Jephthah, and Samson, and rescued you out of the hand of your enemies on every side, and you lived in safely. But when you saw that King Nahash of the Ammonites came against you, you said to me, No, but a king shall reign over us, though the Lord your God was your king. See, here is the king whom you have chosen, for whom you have asked. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and heed his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, and if both you and the king who reigns over you will follow the Lord your God, it will be well. But if you will not heed the voice of the Lord but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then the hand of the Lord will be against you and your king. Now, therefore, take your stand and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest today? I will call upon the Lord that he may send thunder and rain, and you shall know and see that the wickedness that you have done in the sight of the Lord is great in demanding a king for yourselves. So Samuel called upon the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. All the people said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we may not die. For you have added to all our sins the evil of demanding a king for ourselves. And Samuel said to the people, Do not be afraid. You have done all this evil. Yet do not discern aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside after useless things that cannot profit or save, for they are useless. For the Lord will not cast away his people. For his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, and I will instruct you in the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord, and serve him faithfully with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you will be swept away, both you and your king. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is a weird text to have to preach this week. And in case any of you are wondering, no, I did not choose this. <laughs> See, the pastoral staff several months ago, before we knew Pastor Inspector and Levi would be leaving, decided we would be going through First Samuel. And we decided what texts we were doing for the most part. And this was the text that was scheduled for last week. That Pastor Becca decided that she was not going to preach on her last Sunday. And that instead I would have the pleasure of preaching on the first Sunday without them. It's the next text up in our story. And it's weird, but after all, it is important for us today. See, I think there are some interesting things happening with us that the people of Israel might understand a little bit at this time. In 1 Samuel 12, we are in the middle of a transition in leadership for the people of Israel. We've actually been on this topic for a couple of weeks now in our sermon series. Samuel had been judge of Israel for many, many years, from his youth up until this day, when he acknowledges he is old. Not entirely sure how old, but old. 
And yet the people of Israel, despite all that Samuel has done for them, are disgruntled with the system of judges. They know he's old, Samuel is old, and they have seen that his sons are not like Samuel, that they are indeed corrupt. And so, concerned with that, and with the warring nations around them, King Nahash of the Ammonites that you just mentioned, they approach Samuel and they ask for a king. And Samuel is disheartened by this. And so he goes away, he talks to God, and eventually comes back, warns the people about the dangers of kingship, and then agrees. And then a few, a little while later, anoints Saul as Israel's next king. Saul has been chosen as king, and we left it off there a couple of weeks ago. And it's kind of an interesting piece in the text, where at the end of Samuel being chosen as Israel's king, everyone kind of just goes home. And then in the text, we have this sort of about a month period between that and where we are now. And in that time, we have King Nahash that Samuel mentions in his speech. Attacks, and besie attacks Israel, besieging an Israelite town. And they send out messengers seeking help from the rest of Israel, and Saul hears about it, and rallies Israel, defends the town, defeating the attackers, and Israel decides it's time to celebrate Saul's kingship. This is where we are. Israel has gathered together to celebrate and to renew the kingship, to recognize that Saul is indeed king, and to start kind of acting like that actually means something. And so Samuel is here speaking to the people at this celebration of Saul's new kingship, recognizing that Saul is now the leader for the people of Israel. Indeed, throughout the rest of 1 Samuel, Saul, uh, Samuel does not serve as a leader for the most of the people. Instead, he serves primarily as an advisor to Saul, passing on the instructions to God. In fact, if you look through the rest of Samuel, you will find nowhere in there that Samuel speaks to a large group of people. Nothing larger than a town is ever mentioned of Samuel leading the people in any way. And so, Samuel... This is Samuel's farewell speech as leader for the people of Israel. And he says this to them in this time of transition. And so what does he have to say for us this morning? And he begins with a question that seems odd, almost self-righteous at first glance. Has my leadership been faithful to God? Has it been a leadership of justice for all of you? And I think we kind of, it's kind of weird, and this is, I think, the main reason Pastor Rebecca didn't want to preach this to the passage was because how do you ask that without, but, but he's trying to do things, two things I think here. First, he really doesn't want his ministry to end, his leadership to end, with someone still grieved by his leadership. He wants those with grievances to come forward so that he can indeed make restitution. He wants the people to have a say that, and to, to have a say in righting any wrongs that he may have done. And when there is none, he also, I think, hopes that the people will be able in the future to look back at his leadership and to recognize just what faithful and just leadership looks like. Because Samuel does not want the people to turn to, the, to new leadership that is unfaithful and unjust. He warns them, again, as he has before, that the dangers of kingship and how they must continue to serve God and that king must do so likewise. For if the king and the people will live in ways of injustice and unfaithfulness, disaster will befall the Israelites. The people will suffer as the king becomes more concerned with power than justice. And I think for us in this time of transition, we are invited by Samuel again 
to consider, have we seen faithfulness and justice modeled for us by our leadership? Did Pastors Becca and Levi model the love and the faithfulness of God to us as they led us over these last five years? Was their, model, was their leadership like that of Jesus and that he described in Mark 10, where it is not lording over those around us or exercising authority, but serving as Jesus serves? And if you believe, as I do, that they have done so, then we have in them an example against which to look, to compare whatever future leaders we might have or seek or, or who might come as possibilities before us. Like the people of Israel, we are reminded in this text that we have witnessed what faithful leadership looks like and are called not to settle for anything less. But the central component of Samuel's address to the people, and I think the key thing that we need to hear today, is not a reminder of his faithfulness, and it is not a warning against the dangers of unfaithful leadership or what might happen if the king does not serve God. No, his central message throughout all of this is that in all of Israel's history, through its ups and its downs, that God has still been faithful to them. Amen. He tells them again their story, the story of the death Exodus, the story of the God who redeemed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and brought them into the land in which they now live. The story of the judges whom God raised up when time after time the people went after false gods, the Baals and the Astras, who could not save them from their enemies. But God raised up judges and brought them redemption and salvation. And the story of a God who has continued to be faithful to them, even when those very judges who were raised up by God to save them, turn out to be unfaithful. For the judges that he names are not paragons of virtue. They are some of the strangest and weirdest people you will ever meet if you read their stories. He tells them again their story, the story of a people who now, in this time and in this place, have rejected God as their king by demanding that they have one they can see to reign over them. And yet, he tells them again and again that God is faithful and that God is not done with them. He reminds them that God has never abandoned God's people, that has always saved them in that in their time of need, and he concludes with this. They can have hope in the future, but he, the Lord will not cast away his people. And so for us in this time of transition, we too have hope for our future, because we know that God is faithful. We know that when our leaders have demonstrated to us love and faithfulness, God's faithfulness has been on display in love. We know that when our leaders have served as in the way of Jesus, that God has been faithful to us in love. We know that when we fear and serve the Lord, when we are a people of faithfulness and love and justice, that God is faithful to us. But church, the even better news for us today is that God's faithfulness does not depend on us or our circumstances. For even if we are unfaithful, God is faithful. Amen. Even if our leaders lord it over us and those around us and, reject, and we have thus rejected God as our King and Lord, God is faithful. Amen. And we know that even now in this time of transition when our future is unknown, that God is still faithful. Amen. And so in our uncertainty, we place our hope and our trust in the God who has always been faithful to us and to all of God's people. So church, it can be tempting in this time when we do not know what the future holds to turn to those who offer quick fixes to turn to the first possible opportunity for leadership. 
But let us not turn aside after those whose leadership is unfaithful and unjust. Let us not seek for the king who will fight our battles for us. Let us not look for the leader who will lord it over us and over those around us. But let us fear the Lord. Let us serve the Lord. Let us heed his voice. And let us in this time prayerfully seek a leader who models for us God's love, God's faithfulness, and God's justice. And let us in the midst of all of our uncertainty fix our eyes on the God who has always been and will always be faithful. Trusting that no matter what comes next in our church, in our lives, in the world around us, that that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. And church, we conclude today with this table that for us is the greatest reminder we have of God's love and God's faithfulness. We come to this table every week and so remember that God has not abandoned us to the darkness and the despair and the death in which we once lived but has come to us, entering into that darkness, and brought us light and life. At this table, we remember that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. And so we come to this table, as we do every week, not because we are always faithful, but because even in our unfaithfulness, we find that God is still faithful to us and continually calls us back to God's self. Amen. So church, Christ our Lord invites in this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Yes. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Church, hear this good news. God is faithful. And Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, proving God's love and God's faithfulness for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are a forgiven people. Say and speak to God. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance for me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Church. I'm going to invite you in just a moment to come down the center aisle with your hands held open, ready to receive the good gifts of God, the gifts of God that God is faithful to give to us, even when we have been unfaithful, even when our 
ways have been contrary to God's. We do not come grasping and grabbing, we come ready to receive, trusting that God is faithful. Church, come, taste and see that the Lord is good. I invite you to peel back the first layer to reveal the Jew, the bread. Church, this is the body of Christ, broken for us. Take, eat, and be grateful. I invite you to pull back the second layer to reveal the juice. Church, this is the blood of Christ shed for us and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, and be grateful. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for, uh, to us. Grant that we may go into this world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. this morning. May we go singing. 